Hey everyone, welcome to the second devlog of the medieval style strategy game that I'm developing for mobile. In my last devlog, I added some starter melee units and set up animations for each. I also wrote a character controller that would handle the behavior of each unit and I also added navigation to the game using Unity's nav mesh system. Since then I've made some changes to the camera, added the first proper battleground, added a lot of new units and also added some game feel to the battles. That's a lot to talk about, so let's just get into it. Before making any other major changes, I wanted to settle on the camera's field of view. Having the right camera perspective from the start is very important, as it decides the look of the game early on. For strategy games such as this one, you usually see cameras having a fairly large field of view, as this allows the player to view more of what's happening on the battlefield and plan ahead. This was not a look that I wanted my game to have, as firstly this game will be focusing mobile devices and I don't have that much screen space. Also, having such a large field of view, you compromise on the level of detail for each 3D model, as we get to see more, but on the other hand, every object on the scene looks too small. The game that I found to have a good balance between showing the level of detail and also having an acceptable field of view was Warcraft 3. So trying to have a similar camera setting, I settled on this look. It shows the buildings, walls and units with enough detail without compromising much of what's happening around us. Next was to decide the actual look and size of the battleground. For that I created a new terrain. Set the reasonable distance between the castles and also set boundaries for the upper and lower ends. I then got to sculpting. Based on the camera position, I did not have much reason to introduce any details into the regions that are out of our field of view. I extended the terrain enough to hide the grey skybox region and made it look like a plain battleground surrounded by hilly areas. Next I added some trees to the hilly areas. For this I used the free nature pack by Quaternius. I've linked the pack below. After carefully placing all the trees while keeping in mind the camera position, this is what the battleground currently looks like. I'm happy with this for now and will come back to make any changes later on if needed. I also added ranged units to the game as no medieval game is complete without archers. For that I quickly wrote a script for the archer units that reused code that I had written for the grenadiers in my previous game. I was happy with how well it worked. The arrows were flying and following a parabolic path towards their intended target, but then realized that it fails to hit moving targets. As long as the target is stationary, the arrows hit their mark, but as they start moving the code falls apart. This makes archers on top of walls basically useless, as the enemy units can just walk right under them without taking a single hit. This is because the archer on the wall is shooting towards the previous position of its target and not its next position. So it was back to the code to figure out a solution to this problem. And it turned out it's not as simple to write a function for a projectile to hit a moving target. But after a few days of failed attempts, I managed to get it working. Now the archer takes the current speed of its target along with its current position. Based on these two values, the archer script calculates a trajectory path and predicts the position of its target at the point of impact. Along with archers and range units, I added a whole lot of other units to the game as well, which involve new infantry, cavalry, range units and siege units. All in all, 21 new units were added. Finally, I wanted to add some impact of feel to each mini battle between units, and adding impact sounds greatly help in visualizing a fight. Sound effects can be added from the attacker script when an impact is made and another sound can be added on the units receiving the hit. This sound can be different for cloth, leather or plate armor. In theory this makes sense, but adding these sounds made the battles unbearable to watch as there was too much going on and there was too much noise. Again I went to other games for inspiration that did this well, and I believe Warcraft added impact sounds without making the battles unbearable to listen to. Let 
Judging by this clip, they have a single sound for each impact and is determined by the attacker and not the receiver. Following this, I added some placeholder sounds only to my attacker units. Next, I wanted to add a visual aspect to the impact as well. For that, I added floating text that pops up showing the damage received and then disappears after a couple seconds. I feel this helped improve the feel of the game and the fights are not that bland to look at. And that's all I have to show for this devlog. If you're interested in the progress of this game, then please do join my Discord server linked below. I'll end this video with a showcase of all the new units that were added in this devlog, fighting it out in a battle to the death, and demonstrating all of the changes implemented. And with that, thanks a lot for watching, and I hope to catch you in the next one.